Number 52. Very large forces are produced in joints when a person jumps from some height to the ground. Calculate the magnitude of the force produced if an 80 kilogram person jumps from a 0.6 meter high ledge and lands stiffly, compressing joint material 1.5 centimeters as a result. All right, so this problem's a little tricky, but uh, let's take a look at the picture over here on the left-hand side. So here we have a person, he's six meters, uh, po excuse me, 0.6 meters above a ledge, and they're going to jump off, all right, hit the ground, and the cartilage in the knee here is going to compress. They told us by 1.5 centimeters. So we are asked to first find the force, right, necessary. So I'm thinking about most likely using this formula over here on the right-hand side, because this formula relates, right, energy, work, to force, all right, multiply by a certain distance and then the cosine of the angle. So in this particular problem, if I think about this as uh, energy, right, which work is energy, and I think about, you know, what type of energy, right, is going or what type of energy is occurring in this problem, what type of energy does he have at the initial point, you know, he has all kinetic energy at the initial point, excuse me, all potential energy at the initial point, right? There's all, n no kinetic energy whatsoever. He's not in motion. Until he jumps off the ledge, then this potential energy then gets converted to kinetic, okay? So basically, what we have to realize is that the total amount of energy in this problem will be equal to the initial potential energy of this person on a 0.6 meter ledge, okay? So now, knowing that that's about you know, dealing with potential energy, I'm going to use the formula over here for potential energy. So basically, I'm going to substitute in the MGH for work, okay, because work is in joules and potential energy is also in joules. So this is going to be MGH equals FD cosine of theta. Now, I want to solve for the force, so let me just do that mathematically, right, divide out D cosine of theta from both sides. So divide out, whoops, d cosine of theta from both sides. So now this tells me that the force will be equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the gravitational acceleration multiplied by the height difference between its initial and final point divided by the distance over which this particular force will be applied multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the distance vector and the force vector. Okay? So how can we now think through this problem? Well. I mean, there's really only one difficulty. I think it's going to be the tricky part. It's in terms of the height. All right, so we know the mass, right? Let's just first start with the mass. What's the mass of the person? The mass is obviously 80 kilograms. They gave it to us in the problem. So this is 80. What's G? 9.80. Okay, now what's the height? We well, might say it's 0.6, right? That's how high he is above the ground. But that's true. But you have to think about the total distance the total difference in height from the initial point all the way to the final point. Now, the compression here is important uh, because the actual distance his center of mass is going to fall is 0.6 meters plus this value of compression. Okay? And that should kind of make sense, I think, right? If you compress the joint cartilage in here by 1.5 centimeters, his, and let's say his center of mass is somewhere in the middle of his body, essentially the center of mass right, is going 0.6 meters and then dropping another right, 1.5 centimeters. So the final height, or I should say the total height change, is going to be from here all the way down to there. So it has to include the compression. All right. So let's just do that on the side. Well, actually, we don't have to do it on the side. Let's just remember the total height here is the addition of the two. All right, so that's going to be 0.6 plus the 1.5 centimeters. But remember, this value is in terms of meter. This value has to also be in terms of meter. Simply just move the decimal two places to the left or divide that value by 100. Okay, that's how you would convert it into meters. So this would be 0 0.0150 meters. And then divide this whole thing by the distance that the force is being exerted. Now remember, this force, you know, inside the joint, is only being exerted once he makes contact with the ground here. And then that contact point, right, on the ground, and then the total extra distance, you know, he falls, is the 1.5 centimeters, all right? So this is the distance over which the force is being applied, and therefore the D down here in the denominator 
will be the value 0 0.015. Okay, for, and remember, this is 1.5 centimeters, but I have to have it in meters. And then here, the cosine of the uh, angle, we can just assume that they're pointing in the same direction. The force here should be positive, so that's fine. So now, let's take 80 times 9.8, multiply that by now 0 0.6 plus 0 0.015, and then divide that by 0 0.015. And we get a value here of 3.21 times 10 raised to the fourth, and that's in terms of Newtons, okay? So that's the first answer. That's the answer for letter A. Now let's take a look at letter B. So letter B says, in practice, the knees bend almost involuntarily to help extend the distance over which you stop. Calculate the magnitude of the force produced if the stopping distance is 0.3 meters now. So guess what? We're literally doing the same thing. The only difference is now the stopping distance is not the 1.5 centimeters, it's now 0.3 meters, okay? So basically we're gonna use the same formula here, same exact numbers, the only value that's gonna change is this one and this one. Okay, so we can just rewrite that. Let's do B over here. And that should make sense because his mass is still 80 kilograms. Gravity is still 9.8. Still starting from a height of uh, 0.6 meters, right? But now we're going to add the additional uh, distance in which he's bending his knees by, so 0.3. Right? And now the new stopping distance is going to be also 0.3, right? Times in the cosine of zero. So let's just simply plug that into the calculator. So we're at 80 times 9.8 times then parenthesis 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3, all divided by 0.3. So we get about uh, a value of 2.35 times 10 to the third. And that is in terms of Newtons. All right, so that takes care of letter B. And then last but not least, letter C, compare both forces with the weight of the person. So basically, I'm just going to do two divisions here, right? Let me, do, um, let me do the division for letter A over on the bottom right. So we got 3.21 times 10 to the fourth. I'm gonna take that and divide it by his weight. Now remember, his weight is a function of his mass of 80 kilograms, right, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. And why don't we calculate that since we're on that? So 3.21 times 10 to the fourth divided by parentheses 80 times 9.8. And we get a value, whoa, 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 whoa. It's way too large, made a calculation mistake. 3.21 times 10 to the fourth divided by 80 times 9.8, that makes a little more sense. This works out to about 40.9, or just, you know, we can round to two sig figs. It doesn't really matter. This is about, eh, I'll do 40.9. All right, so that's about 40.9 times his weight. So in the first case, that's a lot, right? I mean, imagine, imagine a force of, you know, 40 people on top of you, right? I mean, that's the force that the knee joint is experiencing. It's a significant amount of force, all right? And now let's do the second one here where we take the two, we take the 2.35 times 10 raised to the three and divide that now by the 80 times 9.8. Let's see what that is. So 2.35 times 10 to the third divided by parenthesis 80 times 9.8 and we get 2.99, right? And considering rounding, it would be 3.00. So now that's three times the weight. I mean, it's a significant difference, right? We reduce the force significantly. So obviously, if you ever find yourself falling from a certain height, make sure to bend your knee. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and uh, hit that like button if we were able to help you out at all. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.